It is known as the roof of the world. High in the Tibetan mountains, on the southwest borders of China, lies the source of several great Asian rivers, including the Yangtze and Mekong. The upper region of the Mekong River is known locally as the Lansang River. For generations, Tibetan tribes have survived by working the salt wells on its riverbank. It is from these wells that this small Tibetan village has drawn its name, Yanjing, meaning salt wells. For over a thousand years, these villagers have lived a primitive and simple life, almost completely cut off from the outside world. Until recently, the only access to this village was by pack animal. Geographically isolated, a unique culture and tradition has survived in Yangjing, exceptional to Buddhist Tibet. Buddhism is the lifeblood of Tibet, with all elements of political, cultural, and social life flowing from it. Monastic life is prevalent and families still send at least one son at a young age to become a monk. A life dedicated to mental and spiritual development through intense meditation, chants and sacred texts in the hopes of reincarnation to a higher spiritual and physical level. I live in a village nearby. A member of my family is ill and can't get cured. He is a Buddhist. We have come here today to light 1,000 butter lamps and pray. We believe that it will help him to recover. In stark contrast to the overwhelmingly Buddhist Tibet, the Yanjing population is Catholic. The first Catholic mission was built around 150 years ago by French missionaries intended as a bridgehead for deeper evangelization into China. Of the original descendants, only a few survive. <laughs> My name is Anne. I'm 78. My grandmother and my parents were Catholic. So am I. I began school at 14. It's a school run by sisters. I studied there for a period of time, but soon I left because I fell sick. I stayed at home, worshipping God there. Although I was always weak in my constitution, there was nothing weak in my decision to be a religious sister all my life. I wish everyone to live a happy life, to enjoy a life of ample clothing and sufficient food. This is the purpose of my belief. With the growth of the Catholic community, European missionaries built the first Catholic church in Yanjing in 1860. Today, it is the only Catholic church in Tibet and for over 90 years has been a sacred place for the Tibetan Yerkalo tribe. Although originally suspicious, the Tibetans slowly came to accept these foreigners with their pale faces and strange customs. I saw the foreign priests building new houses for the poor and giving clothes and food to them. They look after them and unite everyone. Foreign priests have done no evil and killed no one. With the communist takeover of China in 1949, the only remaining Chinese Catholic priest, Father Du, was killed. Soon after, all foreign missionaries were expelled. The Catholic Church in Yanjing, as throughout China, was to suffer grievous persecution. In 1980, the Chinese government established an open policy which relaxed some restrictions on religious practice. In the Yanjing region, both Buddhism and Catholicism revived. 
It was only in 1997, however, that Father Di, a Yangjing-born priest, having completed his studies at the Beijing Seminary, returned home to assume the responsibilities of a parish priest. My name is Lu Rendi. I'm 30 years old. I was appointed as the Catholic priest in Yanjing four years ago. My family has been a family of believers for generations. My mother was a pious believer. Her behavior and good conduct strongly influenced my brothers, sisters and I. Besides, my grandfather was an assistant to the priest. Actually, he looked after this same church. So I wanted to be a priest already when I was a mere child, a pupil in primary school. There are now more than 1,000 inhabitants divided between the approximately 120 households that make up Yanjing. The once predominantly Catholic village, however, is increasingly Buddhist. One third of the villagers, either through immigration or conversion, are now Buddhist. Buddhist homes are identifiable by the prayer flags that hang from the rooftops. Mantras blown heavenward as offerings to the deities. Today, a certain ambivalence towards religious identification prevails. I'm Seni. I am 79 years old. I'm a Buddhist from childhood. My husband was a Catholic believer from childhood. He died at the beginning of this year, when he was 84. I will remember him as long as I live. Seven members of the family living with me are Buddhist. Others are out in public employment. I don't know what they believe. I'm well fed and well clothed. I owe my happy life to the Communist Party and Chairman Mao. I'm very happy. I can't see any difference between Buddhism and Roman Catholicism. They are both good. I still keep all things left behind by my husband as a Catholic believer. Some people wanted to take these things away, but I refused.